tasks. They're not general purpose computers. And so um, they so they yeah. use so they use qubits rather than bits, right? And bits can be, if my understanding is correct, bits are binary, it's zero and one. Qubits right. can have many more states to them, right? Isn't that like that's is that the core of like what makes them so powerful and makes them so different? It is indeed. And so and so you got to think of it this way. When you're representing, when you're calculating things on a normal computer, everything is deterministically or definitely a one or a zero. And by the way, if a voltage is, is kind of somewhere between five and zero, maybe it's like 3.7, the computer will interpret that as one or the other. So everything is a definite one or zero. And so this is fine, but it means things happen quite sequentially. In quantum computers, we use, as you quite, uh, quite rightly said, Mark, uh, qubits. And in the case of quantum computers that attack cri cryptography, we have to use error correcting qubits, which, which we can talk about a little bit later. But those qubits, as you say, are both a one and a zero at the same time with a certain probability. Um, and for those of you who are who are uh, familiar with um, uncertainty principle and, and quantum entanglement and superposition, um, a, a qubit is indeed uh, maybe 30% a one and 70% a zero, or maybe it's 50% a one and 50% a zero. And so the whole process of running a quantum calculation to attack cryptography is the process of passing qubits through quantum gates in order to um, change their probability uh, in such a way that when you finally read the probability across all of the qubits, you collapse the quantum waveform and you get the answer. A lot of mathematics in there, but it's, it's basically uh, pretty cool science.